Hello, my name is Claudia Hodgson and in today's video we're going to be showing how to configure a list in ArcGIS Experience Builder. Now the app I've got here is looking at supermarket locations using the Geolytics Retail Points 2024, which can be found on the Living Atlas, so feel free to follow along with this video using the data. Now here I'm wanting to create a list on my application that shows the details of the supermarkets that are within the map extent. So firstly, let's get started and add in a list widget. So under the insert tab, you can find the list under data centric category, and we can drag that in. As soon as you do so, it's gonna let you pick a template for your list, whether that's a row, column, grid, or flow. Now I'm wanting quite a simple column um, of, for my list, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose this template drag it to suit the space that I've got on my application and click start. Here we can choose the data that we want to display on our list. So I'm going to select my Geolytics retail points and let's close that window. So this is our template ready. It's got our data connected to it. Let's start adding in some data. So clicking on the top text box that's automatically been added as part of the template it then opens up this toolbar. And I'm gonna be clicking on a dynamic content one on the very end of the toolbar, which opens up all of my fields within my data set that I can choose to display in my list. Now I'm only wanting a few key points, so I'm gonna go ahead and add store name, town, and postcode. Now that does look like I've not edited, added anything, but that's just because it's added the font in the same color as my background. So if I change that to black, there we go. We can see that our list is already, already automatically populated with all features currently that are within my data set. So this is a good starting point. We've got the data, but let's format it a little bit. So I'm going to click back on my list and click again so that I'm on the text box. And now I'm going to add some formatting, starting with the store name. I think definitely needs to be a bit bigger. Let's make that 20. Make it bold. And same with the town and postcode, I'm going to make slightly bigger. Let's make 17, pop it in italics, and I'm also going to have it on the row, uh, the line beneath store name, so it kind of acts like an additional details to each feature. Now when I click off that, it looks like you can't currently see those additional details, and that's just because we need to expand the depth of each of these features. So just clicking on the widget once, so I'm on my list, I can drag each feature to increase that width and so I can see those details. Now you'll notice I'm only configuring that very first feature and it's then carrying across for every single other feature in my list. So that makes it really nice and easy to configure applying that same uh, design to the rest of the list. I do also have this template to be able to add a image if I wanted to into my list, but for, for now I'm not really needing that, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'll also increase the width of my text boxes because some of those store names are longer. Okay, fab. So we've formatted our list and we've got the data that we want on it. Let's start adding some styling to this list. Now there are a couple options for changing the appearance of your list. If I first click on uh, the list to start with, and you can tell which widget you're clicked on with the header on the top right here. Let's first go to the style tab. And here you'll see you can change the background, the border and box shadow. Now note here that this changes the background of the entire widget. So if I just click gray here, you can see it's the coloring behind each individual feature on my list which you may want to do, but in my case, I'm going to keep that clear. And instead, I want to change the um, color of my individual features within my list. So going on the content tab, I can then go down to states. And I have another option here for my background. Now, this is for individual components in my list. And I'm going to select the same red that I've got on the rest of my application. With that, I'm then going to change the font to make it a bit more accessible. So I'm going to click this time on my text feature within my list. So you can see I'm now on the text widget. And I'm going to change the font to white. A couple of the other options if you want to, clicking back on my list, is you can add tools. For example, I could show record count if I want users to be able to select features. So I can show selection and clear. 
Or I might want to configure the search feature, which allows you to configure specific fields to be searchable uh, within your list. For example, I might choose retailer in my case. Okay, brilliant. So those are the kind of key components to a list, but I also mentioned at the start that I wanted the list to update based on the supermarkets within my map extent. To do this, I'm going to be venturing outside of the list widget and this time click on my map widget and navigate to the action tab. Now here we're going to be setting up a trigger in action on the map widget. So the trigger is every time the extent changes within my map, I want it to target the framework and I want the action to be that it's filtering those data records. All that's then left is select the data that I want this to apply to, which again is my geolytics retail points. Close that window and let's save and preview this application. So here we have our configured list on the right hand side. We've got a uh, list of supermarkets detailing the store name, the location and its postcode. But let's start zooming into an area of interest here, zooming in on Andover. And you'll see as I start to zoom in, that list is automatically updating with only the details of the supermarkets that are within my map extent. Now, if I just keep zooming here, you can see we're then left with the final six supermarkets that are within my current map extent, making it really easy for the user to uh, digest that information. And that is how to configure a list in Archer's Experience Builder.